Hi everybody, welcome to our show on YouTube. Just looking up there at you guys. We're gonna get going here on Facebook as well. Hi, how are you guys doing? Okay, we're good, we're live in both places. We're live. <laughs> um, we have a new angle on YouTube today. We decided to elevate it and try something different so you guys can see more of the keyboard and see more of us. So if you're checking out the YouTube angle, please say hi. Um, I know I told people to watch it on their smart TV, so if you're watching on your smart TV and you can't comment, that's okay. Welcome to Live From Lockdown. I'm Champion, this is Steven, and today we are celebrating Errol Garner. If you're on YouTube, you can see I've got a lot of stuff up here. Hi, Gilead, nice to see you in Rio. Um, if you guys are on Facebook, say hi. Oh, hi, Sue. Welcome, welcome everyone. I hope that you're doing well and you've had a good week. And uh, we have been getting ready for this Errol Garner show. I'm super excited. Hi, Rodney. Super excited to share music with you today. Hi, Pete. Good morning in Melbourne. Um, please say hi. Please tell me where you're watching from. And don't forget to share the video with your friends. Um, I think I'm going to turn the light down just a little bit before we get going. Steven, talk a little bit. <laughs> well, did you tell them who Errol Garner is? A most famous jazz pianist. <laughs> yes. Hi, Sharon and Roy and Frank and Tomas. Oh, in, in Sweden and Delaware. Yes, it's very warm here today, actually, also in New York. And hi, Toes in Portugal. Oh, Jim's here. Jim? Yeah. Hi, Jim. All right. And hi, Joyce. And um, yes, it's super hot here also. Where's my fan? It's right here. We need it today. Give me some. <laughs> also, I just want to let you guys That's know um, that this is my apartment. Uh, we had a wonderful venue last week, and I miss it already. Uh, but I'm home this week, and my neighbors are building something. Uh, you might hear some knocking hammering. and some hammering. Um, it comes and goes. So if you hear that, I'm really sorry. Um, <laughs> Paul says, do not play Misty for me. Hi, Grange and Montclair. Nice to see you. Hey, Lacey and Leslie, Sergio, Regine in Berlin. Nice to see you. Thank you. I'm, I'm trying to be very colorful today. Is that Bebop Grange? Yeah. Oh, hi, Grange. And Dave's in Holland, Terry's in Chicago. Oh, you know, I was, um, if COVID hadn't happened, I was going to, I would have played in Chicago last night at Winters. So I miss Chicago and all my friends there. Hi, Vicki and Belinda. Jazz Buffalo, nice to see you. Rodney says, could you please do an online concert? I think that's what's about to happen right now. Your Any wish minute. is my command. <laughs> Hi, Kathy. Hey, Avi. Well, Avi's watching on YouTube. Let me know what you think of the new angle. We've elevated YouTube up a little bit uh, so you can see more of the keyboard. Hi, Zoran. Nice to see you. And Frank. So we are... Oh! Hi, Marianne. Bill and Marianne are on there. All right. And Sue Upton. Nice to see everybody. Hi, Klaus in Sweden. I'm really hoping um, I get to come back to Scandinavia this year. That is still quite possible in November. So we're really looking forward to that. And hi, Rebecca in Scotland. Nice to see you. Um, so we're talking about Errol Garner today. We're going to be playing a lot of music. I'm going to sing a lot of music from him. Um, he's a wonderful jazz pianist. And I'm going to show you. I've got two books written by my friend Jim Duran, who's watching the stream. This is Jim's new book. Um, it's totally cool. Um, Lacey asked a funny question. It's available on Amazon and it has a lot of great images in it. Um, first of all, I'm just going to show you guys a great photo of Errol that I want in case you've never seen him before. I've marked them with post-its and there he is in 1959. He wrote Misty. He wrote a lot of songs. Uh, he was a wonderful, super successful, super famous, one of my favorite jazz musicians of all time and we're honoring him today. He did write Misty, we're definitely gonna play that. Lacey asked, is there someone wh whose sole job is your ties? <laughs> yes, there is, me. <laughs> no, mom. Oh yeah, she picks them out. My mom picks them out. <laughs> but Steven does have a large tie collection and we try yeah, to sort of match. Yeah, mom likes to buy him ties and we like to try to match. 
and thank you guys for all the compliments. We're going to start out with a standard that he recorded. This is exactly like you. One thing about Errol Garner is he always picked, in my opinion, the perfect tempo for the perfect moment. So he plays this song a little bit slower uh, than I think of it sometimes, but we are going to play this for you. This is exactly like you. Oh, also, uh, let, me get, let me know if you notice something different about the piano, because something very exciting happened this week. <laughs> I know why I waited. Know why I was true. Prayed each night for someone just exactly like you. Just exactly like you You make me feel so grand I want to have the world to you You seem to understand Each foolish dream I'm dreaming and scheming I'm scheming understand 
Thank you very much. I saw some of you guys say that you got your CDs from last week. Thank you. I'm glad. Yeah. Um, actually, there were, there were so many orders. I was at the post office for two hours. <laughs> So the postal girls there are definitely, um, when I come in, they're all like, no, I don't want her. You take her. You take her. That's true. I come with my big bag. Uh, that was exactly like you. It's actually the very first transcription I ever did of Errol Garner was that song from the record, the original Misty. He plays it in the key of C. And I did that when I was in college. Um, and it's one of my favorite things. Yes, I saw all of you guys found out. What's the big exciting thing about the piano, Stephen? Uh, we painted it black. <laughs> no, no, is that wrong? Is that wrong. wrong? Oh, okay. No, what is it? You nut? It was tuned. You guys were right. Um, she has been tuned. Um, I, I had a really wonderful new piano tuner come, and it took him also like around two hours. Um, the num the letter, the number of the day is two, and um, he said it really was very low, so it's been brought back up, and hopefully, it's um, very good. Yes, we uh, we just played exactly like you in. E flat, that's where I sing it. Um, but Errol did play it in C. And we are going to continue. Oh, where is Errol Garner from? He is from Pittsburgh. And he was uh, from a family of six children. He had a twin. I'm going to show you guys the cutest photo, again, from Jim's new book. Um, we're going to show you guys this a lot today. This is him and his brother. Ernest in 1924. Errol was born in 21. So he's three years old here. I don't know if you guys can see in both both places. Trying to get it in Facebook and YouTube. Um, I don't think a lot of people know that he is, was a twin. Hold it a little closer to YouTube. Closer to YouTube? Sorry, the, we've got new angles on here today. There we go. Um, and I'm actually going to do another blog. I've written multiple blogs about Errol. I'm going to do another one and feature some more um, Stuff for listening, but his. Uh, I wanted to say about that picture. Yeah. I learned from reading Jim's other book. Um, There's another book. This book. Yeah, and uh, the two little boys, they were wanting to take them, mm -hmm. the photos on ponies. Oh yeah, that's right. But the the little boys were afraid of the ponies. They wouldn't mm -hmm. they wouldn't do it. So that's why they took the photo, the famous photo on the steps. Right, that yeah. one we just showed you. Yeah. Um, so Errol, besides being a piano player and having a piano trio and being very famous, he wrote a lot of songs um, in addition to the super famous one of Misty. And we're going to play one of them for you right now. This is a tune called 711 Jump. It's actually from that same record. And it's a little bit bright and it's in the key of A flat for those of you keeping track at home. Um, and I think Errol played a lot of things in A flat. I'm assuming it must have been one of his favorite keys. <laughs> um, because it's very hard. But this is 7-Eleven Chow. What's our tempo? Thank you. 
posted a little bit about it. I put up a photo if you guys want to go check that out. Uh, but we're playing, I know Tom's a big Errol Garner fan. Also, we're playing a lot of Errol Garner music today. That was his tune, 7-Eleven um, Jump in a flat, four flats, that's right. And uh, very tricky. Steven's not on the flugelhorn today. Actually, a lot of this um, lockdown, he has been playing trumpet. The whole time. Yeah. Hi, Pete Gibson in North Yorkshire. Nice to see you guys. Um, so I was going to say something, and now I've, uh, we talked about A-flat, and we talked about the trumpet. I think some people asked if Errol played with other musicians. Yes, he often appeared in a trio, um, and he of, often appeared, also later, uh, he had a conga player, which is sort of cutting edge, and not unlike my friend Lou Donaldson. Much later in his career. Yeah, much later. Jeff asks uh, if I'm coming to Michigan. I hope so. Um, as you guys probably know, a lot to do with um, the COVID situation, our gigs have been postponed or canceled very yes. up in the air. Uh, very up in the air right now with whether we're going to be able to travel this year or whatnot. So um, I'm keeping the calendar on my website totally up to date. And hopefully um, we're going to be back to traveling and playing gigs in August. That's what we, that's what we hope. Um, so... Stephen, tell you're, us. You were talking about did Errol play with other musicians? Yeah. My first exposure to Errol Garner was hearing him playing with Charlie Parker. Yeah, that's good. That's what I was gonna say. Tell him that. Uh, <laughs> one of um, one of our favorite recordings of Bird is where he. Uh, there's also a singer, and they play. Uh, this is always. What's the singer's name? Earl Coleman. Mm -hmm. And they do. This is always. They do Dark Shadows. They play cool blues. And there's a few trio cuts from that as well, pastel and a tune called trio. Um, and it's a very interesting record because Errol Garner sounds very different than any of his other piano contemporaries. So his, big, his biggest influence was um, Art Tatum. And then, of course, a lot of local people from Pittsburgh that I don't know. I'm well, sorry to say. well, their names are in Jim's book. Yeah, the names are in the book. They're also some of the same people mentioned by Earl Hines. Right. Um, but they're not people, I guess maybe they didn't ever make records. We never heard of them. I never yeah. heard them before. Yes, the both Errol Garner books that I have here, which are both written by my friend Jim Duran, uh, James Duran on the book, both mention Errol's brother Linton, who I know a lot of you know because he lived in Vancouver. I unfortunately never met Linton. He also played piano. Um, and I know Sharon mentioned him and Vincent's mentioning him. Um, so they were from, obviously, a very musically inclined family. I'd like to sing another one of Errol's tunes, actually. This is the song Dreamy, uh, originally released under the name that I always knew it under, which is Creme de Menthe. 
uh, like the drink. Is that how you say the drink? Mm -hmm. um, but it's called Dreamy, and these are lyrics by Sydney Shaw, and I'm going to sing this for you guys. Ask me why I have this smile upon my face. Ask me why I see a rainbow in space. Well, I must confess, you don't need a genius to because I'm dreamy over you. Ask me why the scent of perfume fills the air. Ask me why the sound of music's everywhere. Well, I must reveal it comes from the glow that I feel Just because I'm dreamy over you From the first caress Your touch of tenderness Set my heart all From the first caress, I found happiness. I'll protect always. Now I know the truth I've never known before. It's the joy that from someone you adore. Ask me why, and I have a very simple reply. It's because I'm dreamy over you.
He recorded it quite a few times, as I said, under Creme de Menthe and under Dreamy. Um, it was a really beautiful version with strings on the record Other Voices, um, which I really like. I really like that one. And also the famous, I think the first version is on the record Encores in Hi-Fi. Um, it's rangy like Misty, mm -hmm. and it's uh, also very sentimental. And I think the lyric written by Sidney Shaw is also much like the lyric written by Johnny Burke on Misty. And it's very... Um, romantic and I actually I'm really glad we're doing that song now I, I think it's a beautiful song have you ever heard anyone else do it I've heard Errol Garner do it I uh, my friend Johnny O'Neill who's a, a great jazz pianist used to play with Art Blakey and he lives here in New York plays with his trio uh, was one of the first tunes I ever heard him play in person. Oh, he played it yeah. wow I've never heard anyone play it um, other than Errol Garner well I, yeah I think I think a lot of pianists are afraid to play those tunes because they're very they're really, I will say, they're so simple, and they're very melodic, and those are the hardest, usually the hardest things for pianists to be able to do. Romantic. So. Told to play simply, and to play a melody very clearly. Mm -hmm. this, is a, this is my thoughts. You know, uh, I recall <laughs> an, a, a, a video about Oscar Peterson history. Oh, yeah. And he was talking about his teacher, one mm -hmm. of his teachers, and that was one of the the very things he spoke of was this: the teacher wanted him to gain that ability to play a melody, a one-note melody, like with feeling, you know, very difficult. I think it's also um, an interesting thing to point out that, oh yeah, Jim's listing people who recorded it, though he says we're wrong. Johnny Mathis sang it, oh. and Sarah Vaughan. Oh, Sarah Vaughan? I haven't heard that. I, I'm, I'm sorry to say I don't know that version either, although I did read about it in your book, so <laughs> should have remembered. Oh. Um, I was going to say, uh, we haven't really talked about what, we're, we're not playing any Errol Garner records for you today. I wish we could, but we can't because of copyright restrictions on Facebook and YouTube. Um, if we did, you would be able to hear his very super, uh, oh, and also Ahmad Jamal recorded Dreamy. Thank you, Jim. Um, hi, Nielsen. Hi, Robert. Saying hi to people real quick. Hi, Ed. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Please say hi and please share the video. I feel like I'm talking a lot today because I really love Errol Garner and I'm excited to talk about this with you. Um, I was going to say that I love block chords. You guys know that and that one of the reasons I love block chords is Errol Garner. Red Garland is my second favorite uh, block chord player. But Stephen, how would you describe Errol Garner's style to someone who maybe has never heard it? in a basic way. Well, I think he was a very iconic style. Yeah. Not too many pianists really played like Errol Garner, although from from my listening and studying his music I, and from reading Jim's book, I, uh, I believe his style came from two sources, one from Art Tatum mm -hmm. and the other from these unknown piano players in Pittsburgh that must have been very stylistic oriented. That's a but I hear a lot of Errol, a lot of Art Tatum in Errol Garner. Yes, but I was I was saying more like um, it actually describe it in a more uh, plain plain sense, like the left hand. Well, the left hand is very unusual. Yeah, he plays he plays quarter notes down here. He plays four on the floor, four in the left hand, and um, a lot oftentimes block chords here in the right. That's yeah. I mean that's a really yeah, that's plain a, yeah. way of describing it. Right. Um, hi, Laura. But very stride-oriented. Yeah, I mean, yeah very stride-oriented, for sure. 
Let's play um, another song, one of his most famous records, Concert by the Sea. Um, I'm going to sing this tune. I didn't want to have too many. I wanted to sing some of the songs. So his arrangement on this is great. I'm going to sing it and try to sort of mash his arrangement with my own singing. And this is Teach Me Tonight. In F for everybody <laughs> following along at home. <laughs>
I sang it, not in, in those years. Uh -huh. I sang it at Birch Creek. Oh, in camp. At the summer camp because uh, we had a big band chart. Yes. Also, that's another song Errol plays in A flat, in case you guys were wondering. I, um, I have a little story with that song. Good. Okay, good. But I'm going to show them first. They want to know how to spell his name. Oh, okay. E-R-R-O-L-L -L -L Garner. It's in reverse on YouTube, so I'm sorry. But that's how you spell it. Errol. A so, lot of people say Earl. It's not Earl. It's no. Errol. That was a problem in the family, they said. What was? Teach the, me tonight? Pronunci pronouncing his name. Oh, because it's a little bit of a tongue twister. They would, people would call him Earl. And, uh, Earl. I know musicians are calling that. Well, because if you just, if you have a southern accent. Yeah. But my little story, oh, take, it'll just take a minute. <laughs> we were playing a gig, and Champion was in high school. And she had a trio in high school, mm -hmm. worked all the time. I was playing drums for her. And for some reason, I had something else, another gig or something to play. And I got a drummer for yeah, her yeah, yeah. to play yeah, in my place. He was an older guy. Actually, he was an air marshal. His name was Hal. Yeah. A He's really, an air marshal. Yeah. A really good drummer who was living in Oklahoma City at the time. And um, he went, he said, oh, I'd love to do that. I'd love to do that. So he went and played... The gig with her, and she called this tune on him, mm -hmm. and she had learned it from the Errol Garner record. Yes, I had, I had transcribed. And if any of you know that record, there's some particular things in the record, rhythmic things Fair. that the drummers play and so forth. Fair. And uh, they were playing it, and she was kind of arrogant in those days, and so she thought, how would anyone really know? But she hoped he would do a good job. Well, he knew the exact arrangement. He played it perfectly with you that night. Yeah. Played every lick of everything on the Errol Garner record, mm -hmm. and for that, from that point on, they were great friends. And Hal had learned it when he was a younger man from the record. And well, because that was such a, I mean, well, such a hit record, hit yeah. Record. Anyway, just um, a little story. It's funny. No, it's funny. It's good that you bring that up because really, um, I feel like people who really love Errol Garner, musicians and and listeners, I feel like they're a club. Yeah. Like, if you meet another person who, group, yeah. who loves Errol Garner, it's very exciting. Because, and I don't know, there are a lot of us, but somehow it feels exclusive. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. there's a lot of, uh, you know, specific recordings that are exciting to talk about. Um, I see you guys saying, uh, Shadow of Your Smile. We're going to do that, for sure. Um, yes, Malcolm says she was being Virgo. That's true. I mean, I'm a Virgo, and that's a very, that's a trait. Yes, yes. Um, not the arrogant <laughs> trait. <laughs> anyway, we should play some more music. Um, we have a list, but maybe we should do Shout Out Your Smile right now. Sure. Steven's looking around for the list. I don't know where it is either. Uh, if you guys are know. tuning in, please say hi. Tell me where you're watching from. Don't forget to share the video um, because we get so many good uh, wa like people watching and we get so many good views even after the fact because I know 5 p.m. is not the best time for everybody in the summer but it's because you guys share the video so you are the best thank you for sharing I'm not oh Sherman says are you sitting on a phone book I'm not but totally honest I have raised the piano bench up because I've, I was wondering <laughs> Errol and I are the same height, basically. I guess he would have been an inch taller than me. Um, and not if I'm in heels, which I am, so we would have been the same. But um, I wanted to see what it was like to be so high in the air. So I'm, I'm higher because, than normal. Because he sat on a phone book. He sat on a phone book up really high. Probably, honestly, a little bit higher. But I'm higher than normal because I wanted to see uh, what it would feel like at my tuned piano, yes. Um, Errol did this recording uh, with congas. We don't have congas, I'm sorry to say. Fuku, if you're watching, you should practice. I can't, I'm kidding. Um, but this is... The shadow of your smile When you are gone And see 
Topic, but my very favorite Shadow of Your Smile performance of all time is a video that's on YouTube of Sarah Vaughan uh, in the 60s. It's a black and white video, and it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. Pretty awesome. She sings really great on there. Well, my favorite version, you don't even know what it is, do you? No. <laughs> of Shadow of Your Smile, go on YouTube and listen to it. It's Jack Sheldon oh, yeah, yeah. playing it for the movie. The movie was, I, call, I think, called The Sandpiper? The Sandpiper. Elizabeth yeah. Taylor. 
Jack Sheldon plays it amazingly. And in the key of A natural. Really? Yes. What key were we in right there? E, e flat. flat. Um, thank you guys so much. Sharon is reminding us, uh, to reminding me, to remind you, to remind everybody. If you want, you can um, contribute and donate and tip to these shows. Because of you, we have these wonderful microphones. We have um, stands and we have lights. lights. We have Cameras. a tuned piano. Um, very exciting about that. So if you would like to do that, you can do that via PayPal or Venmo. Also Zelle. Um, and all of the information about that is in the text box. And I'll see, maybe our producer and moderator will make it into a comment. She's, she's operating multiple systems today. We have the TV going. I mean, I'm on the YouTube is on the TV and she's got her phone and a computer. So she's doing a lot today. Um, and she says hi. And I should say that uh, my mother doesn't like to talk about her work a lot, but she works at New York Presbyterian Hospital. And today is her 10 year anniversary of working there. So yay, yay for my mom. And she and did not miss a day during COVID. She didn't miss a single day uh, during COVID. Well, it's still going on. She hasn't missed any Yeah, right, right. Um, we're going to continue with some music. And I wanted to tell you guys, uh, Errol Garner's music is very available. It's all on the streaming services. Everything you can buy. CDs on Amazon, Mac Avenue, and Octave just reissued yeah, sure. uh, 12 discs. They are remastered. I'm holding them all in my hands. They are remastered. Uh, reissued and they all come with a new bonus track. They're sure, pretty cool. One. This is one of my favorite ones. That's Magician. I think it's a great cover. Um, I'll do you too. Steve. <laughs> it's yeah, in reverse on there anyway. Um, yeah. Then Errol Garner. This is another great one up in Errol's room. These are all really great records. And if you want to check Errol Garner out, it's easy. It's easy to do it. And there's also tons of great uh, concert footage and videos on YouTube also in color and in black and white. So, um, what How are we... How about something from Magician? Oh. Yeah? Is it that yeah, time? Yeah, yeah. This is a tune I learned. Actually, this is good because I just said congratulations to my mom and actually this is her request. Uh, this is Errol Garner's arrangement of the Carpenters Close to You and it is on the Magician. Um, here we go. This is really... <laughs> I got another song. Are we in A? No, it's in E flat. Yeah. Or it's not in A flat. How close to you. <laughs>
extremely different. Lawrence says, interesting and different. Yes, it is. It's very, you have to hear it because there's this really great, um, what would Fuku call that drum beat? Uh, like, it's like a jazz, it's sort of a basa, samba, basa funk samba. beat, and there's yeah. congas. <laughs> Disney is a good theme. Um, and it's from the record cover, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's from the record Magician. And uh, Grady Tate is on there, Bob Cranshaw. And uh, Jackie Williams is not on this cut, but Jackie Williams, our friend from New York, who's a great drummer, plays tambourine uh, on a couple cuts. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, yeah, it's a weird intro. Yeah, that's a very indicative thing of Errol. And uh, they're, not only are they, are they weird, they're incredibly difficult to uh, attempt to imitate because I, I his mind... I want my mind. I want my mind to meld with his mind, which is why I'm sitting up higher, and why I'm. He grunts a lot. I was grunting, so right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to be like him, um, and yes, there's often a lot of like um, different tempos. So he'll play something like, and then they'll play in a double time, change, yeah. or there'll be like a little Latin or a little six eight feel. Definitely things. It's very different from the Carpenter's version. Um, usually, That's my good. mother dances while I'm doing it. Did you dance today? She danced in her in her chair. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, it that sounds is to me to it sounds a lot like Thelonious Monk on the intro. Yeah, I hear a lot of Monk because I think Monk and Ellington and Art Tatum. All the stride very, players. Yeah. They're their stride. It's a lot of rhythm. But it's super creative and loose. And I feel like the, as the music progressed, mm -hmm. jazz, as jazz progressed, um, it was almost like swing and bebop, they codified the music more. Mm -hmm. Whereas... They smoothed out. They smoothed it out, where it was very free and loose before. We are going to play Misty. Don't worry. Don't get worried. Uh, but what are, what are we going to play right now, Stephen? You're calling the tunes now. Uh, your lady's choice. You want to oh, play Misty? Uh, I thought we were going to do uh, Girl from Ipanema, too. Yeah. Do that. Another samba line. Now oh, let's play Misty. This is Errol Garner's biggest hit and, of course, one of the greatest jazz songs of all time. And Stephen is going to play it for us. <laughs>
about that song in the, that I learned from Jim Duran yeah. was that Errol was playing that song mm -hmm. before it ever had a name to Yes, it. this is evidently true. Tell about it. Um, also, that song, again, played in, uh, played in A flat and um, originally. originally in the recording. And I guess it was played, uh, he played it, and it didn't have a, song, a name. And other pianists heard it, and they played it also, and they would just say, this is a tune played by Errol. This right. is according to, to, uh, to Jim's book. And um, then I read in the new book that um, maybe the original title had been suggested to be Hesitation because of all the breaks that occur, uh, both in the A section and the bridge. Um, and I don't, I don't know where Misty came from. Maybe, uh, I, I think, yeah, it could be wrong, and maybe Jim will tell us um, that it comes from the lyric. Johnny Burke wrote the lyric. And uh, this song was first released on record in 1954. So, no, we played that in E-flat. 
Um, Steven sometimes likes to play it in B flat. I like to play it in A flat, but only if um, if we're doing a piano trio. And um, the published big band yeah. version I played many times was in A flat. Was in A flat. Yeah. Um, and I just the way you played it made me think uh, Clark Terry played that a lot. He loved that song. He loved that song. Many people do, of course. So we're going to go over. I know it's been we've been over now about five minutes into our hour, but we had some other things we wanted to talk about and show. What were they? Pictures. <laughs> we've got all these record, records. Record. We've got all these books. Uh, and we've got show a couple oh, of covers. We I showed you Young Errol. This is also a really nice photo of him smiling. Um, I know some of you said that. Um, some of you, some of you said that. Um, he, he uh, inspires me, he makes me very happy, and that's true. And I think, I always think back to what Benny Green, my friend, uh, jazz pianist, would say, was that, you know, this kind of music, Errol Garner's music, and, and Clark Terry, you know, a lot of people we talk about here, um, is like vitamins, and you take them, and they're good for you, they make you feel good, they make you healthy. And I think uh, Errol Garner's music is like that. This is one of, this is funny because it's the same record, which is the most happy piano, and uh, I like the original cover here, and Stephen likes the other one, <laughs> but they're both pretty cool. So this book is James, James Duran's new book called Errol Garner, The Essential, this is the front, The Essential LPs. And um, it has a lot of great info in it and a lot of beautiful pictures uh, beautiful of Beautiful photos of the album covers. There's another one that's great with the hands. And also has a great bio and a lot of really... Um, it, a great index. You know, I love jazz books. I have a huge jazz library, and this one is really invaluable. I use the other book, The Most Happy Piano, a lot uh, because of its discography, which is like incredibly detailed. Um, so that's really fun. And I think we're going to play a tune that uh, Errol released. This record, I think this comes from Up in Errol's Room. Yeah, it's from this record, Girl from Ipanema. Um, but there's a bootleg version out there that Jim shared with me that's my favorite, and we hope you enjoy it. Thank you. 
than the real song. Errol always would play A, this is like sections of the song, A, A, B is the bridge, and then normally there's just one A and the song is over, but Errol would always play A, A, B, A, A. And I don't know why, but I liked it and I thought we should do it too. Yeah. So um, thank you guys so much for being here with us today on our 14th edition of Live from Lockdown. Um, we are still sort of in lockdown here in New York. Um, there are some people, I think, playing outside in, in the parks and at some restaurants. Um, hopefully, we'll be back inside playing gigs in August. Fingers crossed. My website is up to date. I love hearing from you guys. I've gotten a lot of feedback that you really like having these themed shows. Um, so if you have a request for a theme or anything like that, let me know. Also, I changed the setting, the viewing on the YouTube view, um, on the video. So please let me know if you like that. And feel free to really um, comment and send me messages anytime about anything. I love hearing from you and I think it's important that we stay uh, in touch and together during this time when so many of us are at home and uh, isolated. But thank you so much for joining us to celebrate Errol, my favorite, one of my favorites. A lot of great songs. Honestly, we could have done like another we could do another show about him, yeah. which I think we probably will later in the year. Uh, so thanks again. If you want to contribute and tip, please feel free to do so. It's not expected. It's very much appreciated. You can do it via PayPal and Venmo and Zelle. All those links are in the text block somewhere in the video on both YouTube and Facebook. You guys are the best. Thank you. Please share the video. And uh, we're going to close out. Is it, do we, do you want to do another song before the, the final song? Time for, look for the silver lining, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this is our little theme song. You guys take care. Look for the silver lining. Whenever clouds appear in the blue. Remember somewhere the sun is shining. So the right thing to do is make it shine for you all a heart full of joy and gladness will always banish sadness and strife so always love